Hello again, fellow Beach Bum Traders. Welcome to part one of our weekly trading game plan for the trading week of September 12th through September 16th, where we're going to talk about how to make money trading with a strong dollar. So in part one of our weekly trading game plan, as usual, we'll do our market analysis. We'll look at where the markets behave. We'll look at the economic data from last week and how that affected the markets. And then towards the end, we will strategize on how to make money trading with a strong dollar, whether the dollar is going up or down. We can make money uh, trading either direction. So we'll talk about various strategies, techniques to make money tra uh, trading with moves in the dollar as it's been uh, the focus, uh, the primary driver recently. And again, we also have some questions that we'll try to answer from our Beach Bum Trading community towards the end. So welcome to all those that are joining us in the live stream today. Walter Lyons, DS Greg, Captain Maddie, Spacula, thank you all for joining us. Glad to see you all. Hope you're doing well. So here's our notes document for our weekly trading game plan for this week. You can find our Google documents in the public folder and our Google Drive. There's a link in the description box below. So you can see some of our previous uh, notes from our weekly trading game plan. Our notes have all our links, etc. A lot of the economic data. So uh, we'll get started. So we'll start in FinBiz. We'll see how the markets ended up on Friday. Uh, we see the markets made a rally on Friday. Um, NASDAQ was up. We had a rotation in its tech. We'll see. It was kind of a, you know, a, a rebound uh, towards the very end of the week. We see we had a lot more advancers, a uh, good number of new highs, but the number above and below the 50-day moving average is still pretty balanced. So, uh, we're still at a pivot, and most stocks are still below their 200-day moving average. So we'll see how the indices look in a second. We can see most of the sectors were green. Uh, we'll look at the groups, except for a little bit of healthcare and utilities. Except, again, we saw some rotation, you know, into technology, communication services, which we'll also see in a minute. So just some recent news. Uh, Fed unwinds liquidity. We'll talk about quantitative tightening. We'll talk about increasing interest rates. Uh, we've got some questions. Again, we'll try to answer. Good morning, Flip of the Shippa and the Blind Trader. Thank you also for joining in our live stream. So if we quickly look at the futures, we saw a run up in oil. It tested that $90 mark and bounced back down, failed from that resistance point. Uh, we'll see that the futures as well. Nat gas uh, ran up a little bit, so still below the $9 mark. Uh, we had nice runs in gold and silver that we'll see in the futures. And then we see all the indices ended up green. Uh, we see the euro is broken above parity with the dollar. It was down below parity with the dollar. And again, that will be part of our discussion about the strong dollar is its effect on uh, foreign countries, foreign companies, et cetera, as well as U.S. companies, et cetera. Uh, we saw the treasury yields ran up. We still still see this uh, smile inversion where the short term has got a higher rate than the 10-year, and then we've got a higher rate on the 30. So we'll look at treasuries as well. So let's look at each of the indices, start with the SPY for the S&P. So we see that late rebound late in the week. See it bounced off that lower trend line. From a short term, we see the it's a rising trend. We see this resistance or this pivot point around 414, 415. We zoom out a little bit. Let's see, you know, we're, we're seeing higher lows. Uh, we saw this failure last week off the 200-day moving average, so it failed off of that. And then you can see it hit a low and bounced up on Friday. So let's look at the Qs. Probably looks very similar. And we saw it bounce down to the 50-day moving average, failed a little bit, and then tweezer bottomed, rebounded on Friday. We see it's never actually tested its 200-day moving average yet. Look at the Dow. 
same thing. It fell below its 50-day moving average, tweezer bottom. So um, all of those tweezer bottoms are, are good indications that we could have further rebound going into next week. So we might get a couple days, you know, rebound, uh, unless there's some kind of uh, news or something that causes it to uh, people to, to panic. So we'll look at the Russell. Same thing. Yeah, we got a nice tweezer bottom right across the 50-day moving average. Look at the VIX. And again, we saw the VIX. It popped up above 25 for a little while and then pretty dramatic retracement. So even when the markets were declining, the VIX was uh, reverting to its mean. So there wasn't really any panic, even though the VIX has been elevated. Uh, we'll see how far it'll come back down before we get the CPI data and the next uh, Fed decision coming up. So we'll talk about uh, opportunities in volatility, probably more in part two tomorrow. Uh, but maybe some today as well. So we'll look at the sectors, the groups, sector rotation. So if I go to the groups tab, and again, there's a video referenced in the notes that talks in more detail about how to use the groups tab. So we saw this uh, Friday rotation, a lot of technology communication services. Communication services had been one of the poorest performers recently. So we saw rotation into that poor performer, and it was one of the top performers. Then we see, you know, we've seen this constant rotation in and out of basic materials and energy. Uh, so... The worst performer was utilities, whereas last week, you know, utilities uh, was one of the top performers. So, again, we continue to see these sector rotations back from the, the worst performer, uh, and then it gets a pop, and then the top performer, we see profit taking, and it drops to the bottom. So, so again, for the week, we see basic materials had a good week. Last week, I think it was a little poorer. Real estate was okay. The worst ones were, uh, again, communication services, and that got the pump on Friday. Technology's in the middle. So for the month, the only real positive ones were energy and utilities, which has been a recurring theme. So we see for the month, communication services and technology were the worst performers. So again, we're seeing, you know, the sector rotation, they pick the worst performer and then try to run it up, and then they'll take profits and rotate into the next next one. So we've been talking about these uh, both interday and intraday sector rotations being the, the recurring theme lately. So if we look at industries as well, So we see a lot of energy, basic materials, aluminum, copper, et cetera, steel, all ran on Friday, silver, gold, had good Fridays. So oil and gas, energy, basic materials were of the best performers. The only bad performer in solar had had a run. So again, we see the sector rotation. They were running solar, and then on Friday, they dumped solar. So again, uh, a lot of sector rotation for the week. Again, basic materials, gold, silver, copper, et cetera. They had been declining. They had a rebound on uh, this week. Energy, et cetera. Uranium's been running. And the worst performers were some of the coal trucking. Not a lot of really bad performers for the week. And then for the month, uh, silver was getting beaten down pretty hard. And then we saw that rebound in silver. So, so again, I, th I think the theme is, again, continuing sector rotation. And we'll, we'll see, you know, it's good to look at the best and worst performing industries and groups and kind of watch for that sector rotation. Let me see if there's any questions in the chat, see if I can keep up with you guys. I see you're chatting away. That's great. Got a great community here. If you're not already a member of our Beach Bum Trading community, we'd highly recommend uh, you join us. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Join us in our Discord, etc. I'll show you um, also where we post data for the economic data. We're going to look at the calendar from last week and also uh, for the upcoming date, uh, upcoming week. And just a quick reminder, as this data comes out, 
Uh, you can find an invite to our Discord in the description box below. It's free to join. And again, one of the things I do is I post this economic data as it comes out in the Surf the Markets channel in our Discord. Uh, I've got a screenshot from investing.com as well as the raw data. So I try to get that out to you all, uh, to our community as quickly as possible as it's released. So we'll look at some of the highlights from last week. Again, markets were closed for the Labor Day holiday. I hope you all had a great Labor Day holiday weekend, long weekend. And then on Tuesday, so we got the services PMI was a little weak. We got ISM was a little better than expected. So again, this, you know, this says the economy is holding up pretty strong so far. Then on Thursday, we got um, jobless claims data. Continuing claims was a little bit higher than expected, but initial was lower. So uh, again, this data says the, the jobs market is still pretty resilient. And therefore, um, and you can see this article I linked in here. You can click the link in the notes and read this article. The jobless claims fall to a three-month low. So again, it says the job market is resilient. The layoffs that we're hearing about the tech sector have not impacted the overall jobless or yeah, the overall jobless claims to job market. And therefore, that's going to embolden the Fed to be aggressive with their rate hikes uh, because they don't have to worry about unemployment skyrocketing very quickly. Then we also got the natural gas and crude oil oil inventories on Wednesday, and the nat gas storage was pretty much in line as expected, didn't cause much of a, a reaction. Uh, the oil inventories was expected to be a decline, and it was very high. It increased 8.8 .8 million barrels. Um, despite that, what we're going to see is OPEC decided to decrease production some, and oil actually ended up retesting that 90 uh, mark. <clears throat> But it also bounced off that, I think it dropped below 85. I was expecting a test of that 85. It dropped below 85 and then rebounded. So right now it's kind of in a trading range between 85-ish uh, and, and 90. We'll see in the futures. Um, welcome, Nug M. Glad to see you in the uh, live chat as well. So there wasn't much on Friday. Uh, I'll jump over to the calendar and investing.com. But just a quick reminder is that this coming Friday, September 16th, is a September options expiration. And it happens to be a quad witching, which means the weekly, monthly uh, options and futures all expire on the same day. That tends to cause or that's the potential to cause elevated volatility. So I've linked uh, both the options calendar and this Investopedia article about quad witching uh, in the notes. So you can read that. We've talked about quad witching before. Uh, so if you want to read more about what what is quadruple witching and what does that mean and what to expect, uh, you can read that article uh, in more detail. Another upcoming event is the FOMC meeting on the 20th and 21st. Uh, we'll talk later about interest rates, uh, hikes, and the uh, potential effects. Uh, again, there was a question Spacula was asking, and uh, he and um, Sol Diago were having a great discussion in our Discord about interest rates uh, increases and the uh, is it good or bad, the potential effects. So when we get to our strategy section, we'll we'll try to discuss that further. So. So let's look in more detail with about the calendar for next week. So Monday, not a whole lot. Some inflation expectations. Tuesday, we've got core CPI. So Tuesday, the 13th is when CPI data comes out. Uh, again, if this is much different from expectations. This could cause volatility in the market. If inflation's still high, uh, it would cause the Fed to uh, 
act more aggressively since their top priority is killing inflation. So we'll keep an eye closely on the CPI data for uh, Tuesday, uh, particularly the core CPI, which is what they look at specifically. Again, this is backward looking. So this is August. Um, so uh, they're, they're expecting, you know, pretty much in line here. So 6.1% for the year. So we'll, we'll see how that comes out. Yeah, again, be, re be ready for some volatility right around that number coming out at 830. Then Wednesday, we get PPI, producer price index data. So again, more inflation, front-end inflation data. So again, if that uh, continues to be high, it's going to cause the Fed to be more aggressive, right? If it declines, the markets will like a decline in, in those inflation CPI numbers and PPI numbers. If they're going down faster than expected, the markets would, uh, we would expect the markets to like that. We'll get crude oil inventories again. And Thursday, we get jobless claims, retail. Uh, the Fed speeches are fixing to end. They go into a quiet period soon, so we'll get a few more. But pretty much it's been just reiterating what we've been hearing and what we heard Powell say at Jackson Hole, which is their priority is inflation, getting inflation back down to 2%, and they're going to stick to that until they get it done. And uh, if that happens to do damage to the economy, they're willing to accept that. Um, for, for a little while. So, and right now, again, the jobs market's been pretty resilient. So uh, we would expect them to be very aggressive in attacking inflation. Nat gas storage, uh, 1030 on Thursday is typical. So volatility in natural gas. And we get consumer sentiment data that had been improving from kind of an all-time bottom. So consumer sentiment, uh, we'll see if it continues to improve. And we get Baker Hughes oil rigs, et cetera. So that's kind of the economic data for this week. We see if we've got any interesting earnings. Again, you can see this in investing.com. We'll also see it in Weeble as well. So we've got Oracle. So we've got some software. Uh, miscellaneous. It should the earnings calendar for this this week should be uh, for this this cycle should be wrapping up, so it should be considerably lighter. So see if there's anything that's of particular interest to stocks you own, stocks you might be buying, uh, uh, stocks in the same sector as those you might be buying or owning. So. And I don't see anything high as Sears, so there's some retail, et cetera. So again, the big things next week is going to be CPI data on the 13th, PPI on the 14th. We've got consumer sentiment, oil, natural gas inventory, so that's a weekly thing. Fed meeting coming up. So we'll look at the markets in Weeble. So here's the markets tab on the online browser version of Weeble. They're still running their 12 free stock deal in Weeble. So if you're not using Weeble, again, this is our preferred trading platform. We do most of our trading through Weeble. So you still have the opportunity to get 12 free stocks by opening and funding an account in Weeble. Two free stocks just for opening account, each up to $300. And then if you fund it uh, within 10 days, you get four to 10 more free stocks, each valued up to $3,000. And you can deposit any amount, a cent, a buck, whatever. You can always take your free stocks, cash them out if you don't like the platform. But again, this is our our favorite trading platform. They allow you to trade 4 a.m. to 8 p.m. So, so again, if I look at the markets tab here, this Friday shows a nice histogram distribution, many more advancers than decliners. So we saw a significant rebound. Most of the advancers was a small advance. So uh, nothing real dramatic, a very long tail for decliners. So very few had a major decline. Look at outflow, still the NASDAQ, even though it outperformed from an index standpoint, it had more outflows of cash than 
than the NYSC. So that's, that's kind of interesting. Again, you can see the near-term earnings calendar in the markets tab on Weeble. I find that very helpful. So you can see who's coming up and whether it's after market close or before market opens. So take a look, see if there's anything that will affect your trading. And we'll look at the week for best performing industries because we know Friday was a rebound day. So they're mostly they're going to be mostly green on Friday. So we see uranium's been making a run. Solar was mixed, right? Renewable energy, they were running it and then they dumped it on Friday. Uh, integrated software is mixed. Uh, biotech is uh, not well, slightly positive, transport slightly positive, construction materials is positive, oil energy is positive, office equipment is interesting, hotels, travel is positive, again, and basic materials, metals and mining, we see gold, Platinum, platinum had a rebound. There's our NGD. So we'll see tomorrow how our NGD trade uh, panned out. So we'll talk about that tomorrow. If I go to ETFs, look at the markets, kind of expect them to be up, up Dow, up on the Qs, up on the Russell. So all this is from Friday, so up on the S&P, volatility. Uh, we've got, I don't know why they put the yen in volatility, but up on the yen. We'll see in the futures the foreign currencies, again, with the dollar strength. Uh, we'll see how they were beaten down and how they rebounded slightly on Friday. And what and we'll talk about what effects that that rebound has uh, and how to make money trading. Uh, either the rebounds or this uh, recurring strengthening of the dollar. Same thing with the FTSE, the foreign uh, exchange. Industries, mostly green. Energy, we see the communication services had that big rebound. Basic materials, big green. Technology, so Friday, not much was red. Little healthcare. Commodities, we see nickel, oil, 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 nickel, total return, coffee. So the commodities, and again, when we, when the dollar weakens, that's part of what we'll talk about at, uh, in our strategies. When the dollar weakens, dollar-denominated uh, commodities, it's a, a tailwind, a, a positive for dollar-denominated commodities. So they all bounced on Friday because the dollar weakened. Okay, trying to catch up a little bit with the chat. I see you guys are having a good discussion. It's great to see fellow Beach Bum traders helping each other out. You guys are great. So bonds, real return, Forex. So again, we saw rebounds in most of the currencies on Friday. So now we'll jump over to the futures. So, and again, I've got videos about how to use the futures tab in more detail. If you want to uh, view that video again, you can see the futures. I, I track the watch the futures pretty much uh, during the day as well, using this uh, futures tab in Weeble or in Finviz as well. So we see the Dow, S&P, NASDAQ, they all bounced on Friday. They had a rebound. You can kind of see they they pretty much tested a previous low, each of them, and then rebound. So we could kind of, you know, see where that predictable bounce was in this range of the previous low. Same way with the Russell. The Russell dipped a little bit below its previous low, but then it rebounded. And we see also the foreign exchanges all, all rebounded. We see that uh, retracement of well, the VIX that we saw. And we see this rebound in, the, uh, in oil. As I mentioned, it pretty much tested 80, bounced back up. It had uh, you know, tested 90 
and bounced down, tested 80, bounced up. So it's kind of running in that range between 80 and 90 right now. Uh, we saw this decline, steep decline, a couple days ago in natural gas, which was a little bit ironic given that they uh, pretty much shut off the Nord Stream 1 to Europe, so they cut that off. There's no no indication they're, they're going to turn it back on, So, uh, but surprisingly, natural gas declined, so it broke down below 9. Um, We'll, we'll talk uh, more tomorrow in part two about, you know, how to how to trade the volatility in that gas. I know a number of beach bum traders are making good money uh, scalping natural gas, probably oil as well. And we see that nice <clears throat> rebound in gold. I, I like this pattern in gold. I know it's not rebounding quickly um but i think that that indicates a a, a a lasting uptrend in gold the fact that it's just slowly uh barcoding back and forth and 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 creeping up uh, seems to be that it has a, quite a bit of strength and that's in the face of a strengthening dollar so it seems you know it it was beaten down quite a bit uh, with the dollar strength, but it looks like it's whole and then it held pretty steadily even in the face of the dollar strength and now it's trending back up uh, Silver had a real nice uh, rebound and uh, ran up again Coppers up Platinum you see rebounded all these guys rebounded off that bottom pretty nicely and this was before the rollover in the dollar. So that tells us there's, you know, strength in these uh, commodities. Once they hit a bottom, uh, they rebounded. And again, it's also rotation uh, into basic materials contributes to that as well. So we see the other commodities, a lot of them rebounded. They were beaten down quite a bit and then they rebounded. And we see the treasuries too. The yields in the treasuries had been continuing to run up and hopefully it looks like they might have found a bottom. We'll see. Uh, we are going into accelerated quantitative tightening from the Fed, which means they, they're, they should be uh, running off their balance sheet and selling. Uh, so that would be downward pressure on the price, upward pressure on the yields. Uh, so we'll see. The 30-year looks you know pretty close to a bottom. Uh, 10 years, got a little bit ways to go. Two years, uh, a little ways to go. And then here's the, you know, the subject of our, our uh, video for today, the dollar strength. The dollar had been running up. Ran, the index ran up over 110, uh, which was pushing down all the dollar-denominated commodities, pushing down all the other foreign currencies. We see the euro broke way down below parity. And then uh, the last couple of days, the dollar started to decline. It's still very high. It looks like it's testing that uh, previous high, which would be a support level now. Uh, so the discussions are that the dollar is going to stay strong. It's going to stay kind of elevated at this level um, unless, you know, there's some other event to, to cause it to uh, decline. And Walter Lyons asks, tra trading treasury yield will decline in response to rate hikes. Yes, uh, price, no, price will decrease because if they write, if they hike interest rates, so let's say they, the Fed hikes interest rates to 4%, the, then the bond yields have to be at least 4% for someone to buy them. Um, otherwise, you know, they're losing money. So uh, they can just leave it in the bank and get 4%. So if you want to attract people to buy bonds, you have to offer a yield that's higher than 4%. Um, so the yields will go up if uh, the Fed hikes interest rates further. The yields of bonds will go up, which means the price will go down. Does that make sense, Walter? So we also have downward pressure on... Uh, bond prices due to quantitative tightening, which will they're selling. So that means the prices will go down, yields will go up. 
Yeah, we'll talk about cold and boil. Uh, Captain Maddie says about cold, KOLD, which is the short on natural gas, and boil, which is the long on natural gas, and kind of some strategies for playing that probably more tomorrow. So again, if I get back to the foreign currencies, we see they bounce. The euro's around parity. We see Canadian dollar bounce. Also, something to note is both the European Union and the Canadian bank uh, increased their uh, central bank interest rates by 75 basis points already. So, so that makes their bonds and, and their, their markets, their cash markets a little bit more attractive because their interest rates have uh, gone up by 75%. So same way with the Aussie, Aussie and Kiwi dollars, so Swiss francs, everybody rebounded, even the yen, which had really gotten clobbered, had a rebound on, on Friday as the uh, dollar weakened. So again, you can see how from a currency standpoint, when the dollar weakens, uh, the currencies rebound, dollar strengthens, the euro is going to go down, the yen, etc., even the British pound, etc., Okay, so let's talk more about all these strategies uh, for dealing with the strong dollar. So uh, how do we make money trading with the strong dollar? So let's, if I talk about first, you know, when the dollar's strengthening, what does that do to a variety of commodities, companies, countries, etc.? And thank you, Specula. Yes, please, if, if you're enjoying this content, if you're finding this valuable, please hit the like button. Again, no, all of this is not financial advice. This is educational and entertainment only. And please hit the like, the thumbs up if you like this type of information, find it helpful. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're not already a subscriber. And come back for part two tomorrow where we'll pick our individual stocks to apply these strategies, apply what we've learned today in terms of the market analysis, et cetera. So we'll update our watch list. What are we watching to buy next week? And a lot of that is based on uh, this information about how to make money trading with a strong dollar. So right now we see the dollars weakening, but if we see a rebound in the dollar and it gets stronger, uh, what does that mean? So... Here's my list of things that go up or down as the dollar strengthens. So imports, if you're buying something uh, from a foreign country that you can buy in a foreign currency, obviously that just got cheaper. So uh, imports are going to increase. Uh, exporting something to a foreign country just got a lot more expensive because they're going to have to pay dollars to buy your U.S. products. So uh, one would expect to see more imports, less exports. And companies that rely on revenue from exports are going to be hurt, right? Um, U.S. companies that can pay for labor in foreign currencies, for example, anybody paying for labor in China, it just got a lot cheaper because the yuan... Uh, is weaker relative to the dollar. So if I could pay for labor in a, even in Europe, um, it got a lot, it got 50% cheaper than it was. So uh, somebody pointed out Apple, you know, um, they're getting their labor cheaper because it's in China. If you have to pay for labor in the U.S., uh, in your foreign country, that obviously is going to hurt you. Um, same way with inputs. If you're getting your inputs from a uh, foreign country and you can pay for it in their currency, which is not typical dollar-denominated commodities, but if you can buy parts, etc., in a foreign country, in a foreign currency, well, they got a lot cheaper. So, But it hurts U.S. companies that are pricing or selling their products or services in foreign currencies and then have to repatriate the profits in U.S. dollars. So if they have to bring back, if they're based in the U.S. and they have to bring back the um, their revenue that they sold in, say, Europe, and they have to repatriate it in U.S. dollars, well, they just lost 50% on the foreign exchange. So uh, that hurts. And we heard in the earnings even the, this season that 
co uh, companies that didn't account for that foreign exchange rate, uh, it hurt their earnings. So be aware of, you know, companies that do a lot of their sales in foreign countries and they have to bring the, the money back and report it in U.S. dollars, they're going to take a big hit. Again, one of the major areas that we saw is uh, dollar-denominated commodities. As the dollar ran up, things like oil, gold, silver, any dollar-denominated commodity got pushed down severely. And as soon as the dollar weakened a little bit towards the end of the week, uh, all those commodities popped. So we saw a nice pop in gold, silver, platinum, etc. And that's, again, something to watch out for. If the dollar strengthens, it's going to push these commodities down. If the dollar weakens, these gold, silver, etc. will continue to run. And I think there's a big opportunity in this area. If you keep an eye on that dollar, is it going up or down? Uh, should you long, you know, long or short dollar denominated commodities? So granted, there's other factors going on with energy and oil, uh, but gold, silver, etc. Uh, I think if you watch the dollar, it's going to have a major impact on the direction of gold and silver and platinum, etc. Copper. This also benefits foreign countries if they get to sell, if they're doing a lot of sales in the U.S. and they get to bring their profits back in the foreign currency, well, they're going to get a significant amount more, right, because of the, uh, the strength of the dollar. Also, it hurts foreign companies that have to pay for labor in U.S. dollars or if they're buying their inputs in U.S. dollars. So if they're buying a dollar-denominated commodity, silver, gold, copper, etc., and they're having to uh, pay for it in U.S. dollars and they have to exchange their currency, uh, they're losing a lot of their uh, buying power. Also, countries with uh, dollar-denominated debt, so emerging markets are getting hurt because a lot of them have dollar-denominated debt, and it makes it much harder for them to repay that debt uh, because they're, they're generating revenue in their native currency, and the exchange rate just went way down for their native currency. So it, uh, any emerging market indices, funds, co companies in emerging markets, uh, it's a negative. Dollar strength is a negative for emerging markets. When the dollar weakens, it's a positive for emerging markets. Also, one of the first things I commented on was travel and tourism. Um, when the uh, dollar, when the euro went below parity with the dollar, I'm like, hey, it's time to go to Europe. Let's buy, at least buy your euros now. Because uh, back when we were traveling in uh, places that had euros, it was 1.5 to the dollar. So it's 50% cheaper if you buy your euros now, even if you don't travel to Europe. Um, it makes a big difference. Uh, even with their inflation, stuff is still relatively cheap. So Americans traveling to foreign countries, you're going to see an increase right now. So any companies who deal with make money from Americans traveling to foreign countries, uh, some of the airlines, etc., hotels, again, if they're making money from Americans traveling to foreign countries, it's a positive for them, the dollar strength. For foreigners traveling to the U.S., it's a big negative uh, because everything in the U.S. just got a lot more expensive. For example, Disney. Uh, a lot of uh, people from the UK uh, come to Orlando for the winter. Um, so all the Orlando tourism from the UK, I expect to pretty much dry up because it just got a lot more expensive. Um, so something to think about is companies that are dependent on foreigners coming to the US, um, they're going to see a lot of their business drying up. So. Let's all move to France. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Actually, Walter, I studied in college in Caen, in Normandy, uh, just for a quarter. But so, and my French is terrible nowadays because I don't use it. But yeah, that, I'd, I'd be okay with that. <laughs> okay. So, what do you guys think of all of these uh, ideas for how to make money trading with a strong dollar? Uh, is there anything else you can think of where it, you know, a strong dollar either helps or hurts uh, various companies, etc.? What should we look out for as the dollar strengthens? 
Uh, you can see what it's a plus and minus for. When the dollar weakens, obviously you flip the sign on these and the same applies. So on any given day, if you watch the dollar index, uh, hopefully this will give you a list of, okay, what companies, what stocks do we ex expect to go up and down? Flippa, the ship asked, do you think rising oil is somewhat of a bullish sign? Well, for the stock markets, they have been saying that um, rising oil pro prices, so number one, it's a negative for inflation, right? It's, it contributes to higher inflation, which is a negative. And it typically, the correlation used to be uh, rising oil pushed the stock markets down and uh, decreasing oil uh, prices was good for the markets um, but that correlation is breaking down somewhat it's it's really much more driven by dollar strength right now so as the dollar weakens and economic data so inflation um, how strong is the economy how aggressive do we think the fed's going to be etc so i think that correlation with oil is broken down recently somewhat again that everything right now is about the the strong dollar Okay, just checking to see if I'm missing any other questions. Otherwise, I'll try to answer this question from our fellow Beach Bum Traders, Speculation, Spacula, and Solid Dago. Um, we're having this discussion in the Discord. I've got the link to this thread in the Discord. And the, the discussion was on uh, increasing interest rates. And SPAC asks, is that good or bad? So let's talk about uh, trading and making money in a rising interest rate environment. I, I think we've been talking about this uh, for almost a year now. We we do have some strategies we've talked about in the past on trading and making money in a rising interest rate environment. I'll, I'll probably try to um, capture, snip out those previous strategies and probably try to release those as separate videos because, again, we have discussed this for a while. Um, of, you know, what's what does same way we're talking about the dollar strengthening with interest rates rising, which we've expected, uh, who does that help and who does that hurt? Well, uh, so the answer to is it good or bad? It's it's kind of, you know, the typical consultant answer is it depends. It depends who you are and what you're asking about. Is it good or bad for the economy or um, various companies? Um, or the markets so uh we, we can i won't talk too much about the overall uh, societal uh, effects etc but since we're trading we're looking to make money trading uh, we want to know who does it benefit and who does it hurt well rising interest rates traditionally help uh, financial institutions like banks right and particularly this uh inverted yield curve where we see the short term uh, interest rates higher than the long term. That means banks can loan out money um, at a higher interest rate and um, essentially pay it back by bonds uh, at a lower interest rate. So it's t traditionally good for financials. Now, I'm sure that's all been baked in for a long time because people expected uh, banks to benefit from rising interest rates. Um, it hurts anybody, obviously, who has debt in a interest rate sensitive, um, any kind of interest rate sensitive debt. It hurts home builders because um, obviously mortgage rates are now about, up around 6%. So people aren't going to take mortgages, which means people aren't going to buy homes, which means people also can't refinance their homes. So they're not going to sell their homes. So the, the housing market we've talked about, it rolled over quite some time ago. Uh, home builders say we're, they're in a recession now. So that the whole housing market's pretty much in a recession. So it hurts that segment of the, of the market as well. Um, now, in terms, again, is it good or bad? Um, the Fed being more aggressive, they need to kill inflation. So it's good. It was better for killing inflation. Um, now, in my humble opinion, a more aggressive quantitative tightening and removing uh, money from the um, from the economy would, would actually uh, help a lot as well. So uh, is it good or bad for the market? I think the market kind of wants them to get inflation under control at this point. Um, 
obviously, again, it, it hurts the employment market, right? As uh, all these things get more expensive, debt, uh, cost of capital gets more expensive because of rising interest rates. So people aren't going to do capital expenditures. They're not going to hire, et cetera. So it's going to hurt the housing market. It's, you know, we're in a recession already, in my humble opinion, and uh, it will potentially deepen and, and accelerate our, our descent into a recession. So again, you know, is it good or bad? It, you know, it depends. It depends who you are, uh, what you're considering, uh, good or bad. But it it will help curtail inflation if they're a little bit more aggressive, and that's why they're, they're expected to be more aggressive. Um, Pretty much I've expected them to do 75 basis points, and I think uh, the consensus right now is they'll probably do 75 uh, in the next meeting on September 20th. So I hope that at least addresses the, the question, helps answer the question to some degree right now. And again, I'll pull some of our previous strategies for uh, making money trading in a rising interest rate uh, environment again and, and try to release those as uh, independent videos. So. Now, uh, just one final thought in that area is, and, and we'll talk about some due diligence on stocks again tomorrow uh, as well, but uh, rising interest rates, you know, it makes the cost of capital higher. Um, it also, you know, it makes your, your dollars more valuable sitting in the bank or sitting in treasury bonds. So it, you're not going to, it's a risk off move, right? Is I don't have to put my, my dollars at risk. Uh, because now I can get an actual uh, return in a safer investment like a bond or uh, you know savings account, etc. Whereas in the in the past I, it was zero, so um, it, it removes risk capital. Um, also, companies can't you know they can't afford to get loans, so again they're gonna uh, they, they won't be able to get funding. Venture capitalists aren't aren't going to be as willing to fund them because again they're their capital is actually making a real return in other ways. So in terms of growth companies, uh, especially those with really high valuations, really high PE, uh, they're not making money. It's going to hurt them. And uh, I would expect some clean out in the markets. Uh, companies with high debt, um, we're, we're going to see, you know, clean out the market. Those that can't make a profit uh, have high debt. Um, a lot of those guys are, are not going to make it, in my humble opinion. So, again, not financial advice, but that's my opinion. So, uh, you know, be careful. And that's why when the yields go up, we had seen uh, that put pressure on uh, technology uh, growth companies that aren't making money, right? So, okay, if there aren't any other questions, if, if I missed your question, please uh, put it back in the chat with a big question mark. Uh, welcome, Tanavir. Glad to see you. Uh, thank you for joining us again. Again, if you have any further questions, please join us in the Discord. Again, it's free to join. Uh, you can uh, find the invite in the description box below. You can also find invite in on the link section in our homepage, beachbumtrading.com, bum without the U. Also to our Facebook group, all our social media sites, etc., all the tools that we be used, platforms, all the things that we show in our various uh, videos and game plans. There's quick links to those various tools here. So uh, just a quick and easy way to find all, all the reference sites that we use. So. Again, if you have any questions, uh, Tanvir asks, so should we short TLT? I, I wouldn't recommend that at this at this level. Uh, we were just looking at the Treasury futures, and it looks like, you know, they're near the near-term bottom. Um, so I, I wouldn't recommend shorting it. Uh, tomorrow, we'll look at the uh, ETF spreadsheet and we'll see, you know, how far away is TLT, TMF, etc. from its support and resistance levels. Uh, but, uh, you know, again, just looking at the futures, I, I'm not recommending uh, shorting the treasuries because they're all near a bottom um, at this point. Now, longing, you know, again, there's downward pressure on them, uh, but there's also a lot more room uh, on the upside than, than risk on the downside. So, 
Okay, well, thank you all again for joining. I, I hope you found this informative. Please let me know what you think of all this in the comments below, in our Discord, in our Facebook group, etc. If there's some improvements you'd like to see in these videos and in our Discord, etc., we have a suggestion box as well in our Discord. You can put it in the comments to the video, etc. Uh, let us know how we can improve, how we can make this as valuable as possible, and how we can help you succeed in your trading. Otherwise, I hope you all will come back tomorrow, same time, same bat channel, for part two of our weekly trading game plan, where we're going to take all these strategies, all the market analysis, and we're going to apply that to what stocks do we want on our watch list, in our bullpen, in our shopping list uh, for the trading week for next week, September 12th through September 16th. So thank you again, and have a great Saturday. Bye.